Welcome back to Barley and Hops. I'm George. And as always, please comment below, like us, share us with your friends, and subscribe. That's all we ask. This keeps us alive and we can continue to serve our community. Today uh, is going to be a demonstration of how we actually answer comments because someone wrote in and wanted to know, can you actually use that vacuum transfer uh, with the fast ferment? Well, you certainly can, but you've got to do a little bit of an adaptation. And I'm going to show you that here in just a moment. Hey, by the way, Ray's going to have an updated uh, website here on about the 1st of August. Uh, and this is right around the end of July now. So uh, be looking for that. And we've got t-shirts for sale. So, and he's also got some stills in stock. Uh, so get in touch with him. 254-300-8226. Uh, and uh, without further ado, we're gonna get into it. Now we're out at the shop today where a lot of times we spend, we spend time out here just kind of testing things, building stuff adapting. So I've got my own way of doing it. I like doing them out here or I do it in the man cave. Uh, and sometimes we actually, we, we film up at the store. So um, we like to invite you, well, you're into our home right now. So pay attention and let's get on with it. Now, when we use vacuum and you can watch our, our other video here that where we described exactly the types of vacuum and some of the options you have because you don't have to own a vacuum pump. Um, we actually described how you can use just a regular shop vac. Now I've got this small shop vac from Stanley that works perfect. Uh, or you know, maybe your wife's got the Dyson and she lets you use that. Doubtful, but you never know. Okay, here's what you're gonna need today. Um, I've already got the six gallon or six and a half gallon carboy. I've got water in this because we're gonna demonstrate how to transfer from here to here and then from here back to here. See, sometimes you're all set and everything's on the same level and siphoning is not an option for you maybe. And definitely picking it up and pouring it's not an option uh, because of the height uh, or even the weight. So how can we actually transfer between these two? Well, we'll just use a little bit of science and take advantage of the atmosphere and let that do it for us. So here, keep this in mind. Whenever you're going to transfer using vacuum, and it's a great way to degas. Yeah, you transfer, and they transfer back, transfer, you're degassed. You don't have to worry about sitting there beating it with a paddle or running it with a drill. Um, the, the one thing to keep in mind is that the vacuum is always placed on the receiving container. So in this particular case, we've got, and this one can stay open, you've got water or your liquid, your mash, your beer, your wine here. And in order to put it in here, we've got to put this under a vacuum. And that actually, what it does, it just kind of sucks it right in there. It uses the 14.7 pounds per square inch. Yeah, you know, atmospheric pressure is pushing down and it goes right through the tube, goes right in here. Now, here are the things you're gonna need. Of course, your fast ferment if you're gonna use that. If not, any other container, uh, another carboy. Uh, what I'd stray away from though, are those plastic water jugs. Uh, and the reason I say that is, is, I mean, they work fine. But the reason I say that is it's, when you put a vacuum on one of those, you know what it does? It collapses. So unless you put a small, a, a low vacuum on it, and you may be able to get away with it then. All right, you're gonna need, uh, now we've gotta have access here. And we know this is a sealed system uh, because it ferments. So you're gonna have to have another, a spigot. And I've got two spigots here. Oh, here, I'm going to show you these. I've got two spigots. One of them is a uh, three inch, uh, three eighths of an inch outside diameter, and the other one's a half of an inch outside diameter. Now, I'm going to use a half inch, and the reason I use the half inch is for volume of flow, uh, and that's from here to here. I just want to be able to flow in. I just want to do it quicker. Uh, or you could use the three eighths outside diameter. It doesn't matter. Uh, okay, we're going to need a drill. We're going to need a step bit. If you've never seen one of those, these are really neat because you start at the end and it just goes in step by step and it's marked for what size hole you want. And that really drills out real simple. <laughs> now, I'm gonna use the vacuum pump because I just happen to have one available, uh, but you could use the vacuum cleaner and you saw, if you watch the video, you'll, you'll see all the other options you have for that as well. And then I've got this hose. And this hose I have fashioned uh, to go from one to the other. Now here's how I did this. I just took the green cap that came off the water bottle, uh, the plastic water bottle, and it actually fits a carboy as well. And here's what I did. I just cut the center 
of that cap out because it's got the, the same size hose because this is a uh, half inch inside diameter hose and I slide that right through there. Then I drilled a small hole and I put one of these barbs in. Now, and the reason I used a T-barb, you don't need a T-barb, you can have just an angle, an elbow, or you can have one come straight out. And the reason I did that is so that when I turn the vacuum pump on, in order to make this work, I just put my finger on the end and it starts operating. When I'm done, I can let go. I don't have to worry about hitting a switch or you know moving things. I just go, don't go. So that's why I do that. So what we're gonna wind up doing here is since we wanna go from the carboy into the uh, fast ferment, we're gonna do it this way, which means we've got to vacuum in here and the free hose goes in here. Now, if I'm going back in the opposite direction, I just take the lid off, drop the hose in, this one goes here, and then I hook my vacuum pump up, put my finger on, I'll show you that, so don't be worried. All right. Now, in on your fast ferment to start with, I think the easiest place to uh, put this under a vacuum would probably be in the top, more than likely. Um, now, I've got this again. It's this is just an inline valve. There's many ways you can do this. You could probably even take an old. Uh, airlock just cut the bottom off because you know that's going to fit inside your grommet but this inline valve does as well you slide it in the grommet and then if it's in long ways it's on if it's halfway it's off so we're going to do that but once we placed it under a vacuum we're going to need a way for it to get in here so i'm just going to place this valve or this spigot right here and then that way it doesn't violate the integrity of my fast ferment, but it gives me the, uh, the ability to go from here to here without opening the lid. And of course this seals off, so I'm able to do that. So let's get going. Oh, by the way, you don't really need the, uh, the ball on the bottom, the collection ball. You can, you can remove that. Uh, just, it's a lot easier to work with if it's not there. Just make sure your valve's off. It's not on because everything goes in. Well, you're not even put put a vacuum on it then. It'll leak. All right. Now I've used this before, and what I want to do is I want to take I want to find out what's the size of this. I'm gonna put it in there. Whoops, there we go. And then I'll look at that, and that sucker is gonna be one and a ooh, one and an eighth. One and an eighth inches, and it's marked on here. And you'll see how my step bit is marked. Uh, there you go. You see there are marks? So I gotta go to one and an eighth, which is right there. And I'm gonna step bit this into the fast ferment. Let me drill this hole, I'll be right back. Okay, once you get that hole drilled out, uh, you can take that spigot, and that spigot on the, uh, the thread side, if you get it just the right size, it'll thread itself right into the side of your fast ferment. Now, if you get it just a little bit too big, don't worry, there's a washer on the inside and a washer on the outside. So, I'll screw this in there. Let me get back over here. I'll place the washer on the inside and then the screw nut coupler on the inside to hold it. Now, what I have is I have a fast ferment with a spigot right here on the outside. That's off and that's on. So, what I'll do is I'm going to move this to here by the use of a vacuum, and you can see how quick that works. And also at the same time, if this, this is just water as a demonstration, but if this was a mash, a wine, a beer, uh, you, you can degas it at the same time as you're transferring it over. Now the other benefit is that you can adjust the hose length to the bottom 
and not pick up the dregs off the bottom. You know, I talked about that earlier about the, sacrifice, the sacrificial one, the pint, the quart, however much it takes. But what I'll do normally is I'll cut this. Uh, there's many ways to do this, and I know people are going to comment, but that's, yeah, that's quite all right. You could put one of them, off, them steps off the bottom that you have on the, the, your racking cane. Uh, but I'll normally cut an angle on this so that when it goes into the bottle and it sits on the side, that it draws from the top and not from the bottom. And as it draws, it doesn't pick up any of that sediment on the bottom. So let's get this in here. I'm going to set that all the way down to the bottom. There, now that just sits there. Now this one in particular, whoops, this goes here. Now, this barb that's on here is only used when I put it on this one. Uh, I'm going to leave the barb there because what I'm going to do is I'm pull the vacuum from the fast ferment. And in order to pull that vacuum from the fast ferment, I've got to go from this size to a smaller size. And I mean, that's relatively easy to do. All I got to do is use an adapter and or a connector, uh, which I have right here. So I will, uh, let me put this on first. I will square this off and we'll be ready to go. Now that we're all set, you'll see that I've got a hose here that goes all the way down to the bottom and it goes into my spigot that I've drilled into the side of the fast ferment. And then of course I already know this valve when it's long ways it's on and I've got that hooked in here and this goes straight to my vacuum pump and it doesn't take a whole lot of vacuum so uh, don't overdo it. Now here, be cautious. If you leave one of these, this valve in particular, closed and you turn that vacuum on, if you get a good enough vacuum, you're going to collapse this. This fast ferment can only take so much vacuum, but as it stands right now with everything open, it should, it'll transfer. Watch this. And you'll see that water go right through there and in she goes. So if we can transfer this whole jug in, well, there it goes. Yeah, see it's starting to collapse a little bit. That's all right, we're gonna prevent that from happening. We're gonna let it suck all itself in there. There. All right now. Hey, you know, not, not to be deterred, um, and I spliced this right into it because I got to theorize and I said, well, maybe there's too much vacuum. So there's a caution, I'd say, I wouldn't recommend going into the fast run, but can it be done? And the answer is absolutely yes. But you've got to have a small valve, and I have one here on my vacuum pump where I can control the amount of vacuum. Uh, otherwise, it's, there's, just, there's just too much vacuum and it causes the fast ferment to collapse. So I'll turn this on, and you can see the, there it goes, the transfer taking place. And I'm gonna adjust this to about, oh, what, five inches of mercury, which allows for the transfer to take place from this carboy into the fast ferment without collapsing it. But the key is that you've got to be able to control the vacuum. So unless you're able to do that, um, I would recommend trying to go into the fast ferment. Let me see how much more it'll take. Yeah, we're up to about, yeah, about five inches of mercury. And it'll probably jump on me here in a minute, but it's actually filling. And my fast ferment is not collapsing. There it goes. I don't see any deformation. So I guess to answer the question, can you actually go from a carboy to a fast ferment using a vacuum? And the answer is yes. Uh, but the caution is uh, be able to control it to about five inches of mercury and um, it'll work just fine. And there it goes, it's still transferring, it's sucking it all the way in.
So, there you have it. I'm happy. All right, now what I've got, since we already know that transferring from a carboy into a fast ferment by using a vacuum is probably not a good idea, um, but it doesn't limit us from transferring from the fast ferment into a carboy, uh, although you do have the option. I mean, you could, you could just drain it out the bottom, I mean, but you know, people will ask. So what I've done is I've reversed the hoses so that I've got the hose going into the carboy. That's, I'm gonna take it from the fast ferment so I've got my T-valve here. Um, I've put the hose all the way down in the bottom because I've got probably two, two and a half gallons in there. And we're going to give it a whirl and see what happens. Now remember, the vacuum goes on the receiving vessel, not the delivery vessel. So let's give it a try. There goes the vacuum. Oh, let me turn this. Oh, there it goes. And it's starting. To, it's transferring. See, I don't even, it's, it's, it's got enough vacuum to use atmospheric pressure to transfer it back into the carboy. And if I put my thumb on there, it'll definitely go fast, but I'll have to do that. So I'll just let this transfer, it'll suck it all the way out. And this is the process from going from one to another. And again, remember, you can use a shop vac, you can use a vacuum pump. Uh, there are many, many options. Check out the videos, and uh, we hope that we've served our community well, and we'll see you in the near future. She's finished up. Until next time, as always, happy distilling.